right. That was good, wasn't it? Praise the Lord. Appreciate everybody that serves in our church. We've got a lot of servants in our church. We've got people who are willing to do things that nobody else might consider doing. We've got people who are always willing to help out and do whatever they're called on to do. You know, some churches, I've seen churches where uh, nobody wants to do anything because they say, well, that's not my gift. Uh, that's, that's not my area of expertise. Uh, I don't feel called to that. But we got a, we got a lot of people who are just really gracious and ready to serve. And, and uh, you know, I think that's a mark of Christian maturity when somebody's willing to say, you know, that's not my area, but if you need me to do that till you get somebody that can do it better, I'll, I'll, I'll just jump in there and do it. And uh, thank God we've got that kind of a church. First Thessalonians chapter number 1. I'm practicing my short sermon. I'm the same one I'm going to bring, bring a, a Tuesday night, but uh, I'm practicing. First Thessalonians chapter 1, we're going to read uh, all 10 verses, and then I've uh, got just a few points to show you there. I believe it will be a blessing to you. First Thessalonians chapter 1, we're going to give this... Uh, I'm going to give this sermon a title. Give it to you now. We're going to call it a Christmas gift to pass along. A Christmas gift to pass along. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to God always for you all. See, Paul was a southerner right there. For you all. Making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. Can I just stop there? This is not part of the message, but receiving the word in affliction. You know, sometimes, sometimes we are less inclined to listen to the Word of God when we're in a position that's maybe like an affliction of some kind. When we feel like the pressure is on, we feel hurt, and somebody tries to show us some scripture and say, Here, here's what the Bible says, but because we're under pressure and pain, sometimes we don't hear it. But these folks heard it. And it says, having received the Word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Not only did they, were they willing to listen, they listened to it with joy. And the Word of God ought to be a joy to us. Even the Word, sometimes when the Word pricks a little bit, hurts a little bit, that ought to still be a joy to us because it's like getting a splinter pulled out of your finger. It may hurt, but boy, aren't you glad to get rid of it. Well, that's the way the Word of God is. It gets rid of the splinters. <laughs> Verse 7. So that... You, so that you were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to Godward is spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven whom he hath raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come. Father, I pray that you'd bless us as we gather together tonight to hear from heaven. Lord, it won't help much if folks just hear what the preacher's got to say. But Lord, if you would send your sweet Holy Spirit to infuse the preacher with your truth and with your words, with your grace. And Lord, if you would cause all of our ears and our hearts to be tender 
so that we would hear and apply the word of God. Lord, we would be helped. And we pray that's, a, that's what you'd do for us tonight. Lord, it's the last service. Um, well, actually, we've got one more, I guess, Lord, before the actual Christmas day. But we're celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus right now. And, Father, we pray that you'd help us to understand about gifts that we can freely pass on. And, Lord, we pray that you help us to understand it and apply it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we're thinking about giving during the Christmas season. Isn't that what we think about? Uh, when we think about Christmas, we think about the Lord Jesus. But why did he come himself? He came to give himself as, a, as an offering in the place of that little lamb that had been slain and put on the altar in the Old Testament so many times. Jesus came to give himself. And so Christmas is about giving. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you ever thought about this or not, but we, we live in a very materialistic society, and uh, sometimes people put, put great emphasis upon expensive gifts. And it seems like we have to outdo what the other person does. If somebody gives us a gift, we don't want to be chintzy, so we try to give them something at least equal value or maybe a little bigger. And, uh, and if we try to give something a little bigger, then it escalates, and pretty soon, uh, man, we're in a race <laughs> to see how big a gift we can give. And sometimes it gets so expensive, we can't participate anymore. And uh, I, I don't like the commercialism of Christmas. I think it is out of hand. And I know businesses are there to make money, and I'm not against that. But we as Christians don't need to be caught up in the commercialism so that it's about how much we get but Jesus said in the book of Acts, he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that shouldn't be just a cliche to us, but it should be accepted as Bible truth. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, a lot of folks don't like to give gifts at Christmas because they have little financial ability to do it. And that's understandable. And uh, I want to tell you tonight, how to give gifts even if you're broke. How about that? <laughs> How to give gifts even if you're broke. So I get it's a, it's a Christmas gift to pass along. And uh, after this sermon tonight, you may look at re-gifting in a different light than you ever have before. You know what re-gifting is? That's when uh, you, got, you, know, you got that gift last year that you didn't really want. <laughs> You wrap it up and pass it on, give it to somebody else. <laughs> That's re-gifting. And, uh, and if it's something you can't use, but it's something somebody else can use, it's not a bad idea. Uh, but there are some gifts in the scripture that we're going to look at here in a few minutes that you can re-gift. There's some things that you've received from God that you can pass along. Number one. Number one. Are you ready? We're talking about gifts that you can pass along. Number one. Grace is a free gift. Grace is a gift you can pass along freely. Look at it with me again in verse number one. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch that next word. Grace be unto you. What's Paul doing? He's passing along the grace. Hey, this is, not just, this is not just some empty words that Paul's saying. He's the inspired writer of God. The Holy Ghost of God inspired him to say, Grace be unto you. He's passing along grace. What is grace? <laughs> grace is unmerited favor. Grace is getting that which is gracious, that which we didn't pay for. Grace is that which is given with, with dignity and, with, uh, and, and received with gratitude. Grace... It's something you didn't have to pay for. So here's a gift you can pass along. When you get a gift this Christmas, and it's a shoddy one. You ever get a shoddy gift? <laughs> you get a shoddy one. Now, kids, I want you to listen because this will help you. You get a shoddy gift. You get something that's totally what you didn't want. I mean, somebody defined... Uh, Torture is giving a kid a gift at Christmas that he needs. <laughs> they don't want something they need. <laughs> well, listen. 
Grace is free, and if you get a shoddy gift, you know what grace means in that case? You know how you can pass along something free? Be gracious when you receive it. You receive something you didn't really want. And look, they can read your expressions. Can't you, parents? You know <laughs> if they look at you and say, yeah, great. <laughs> Just what I wanted. <laughs> yeah. You can hear it in the voice. You can see it on the face. You can see it. If you couldn't see anything but their eyes, you know, don't you? And sometimes we adults convey the same message. Somebody gives us something, and we say, oh, boy. <laughs> what do I want with this? You're saying it under your breath. You won't say it to them out loud. But you know what? It could be a, a completely otherwise worthless gift but if you receive a gift with graciousness, you know what the person who was giving it was trying to do? They was trying to show you a favor. They was trying to be gracious to you. Now you know what you could do? You can disappoint them and you can make it a worthless gift and you can destroy it for you and them. If you react wrongly. But you know how grace responds? Grace says, I appreciate you thinking about me. I've gotten some tacky things before and I'm not saying lie about it don't jump up and down and holler and say man I've been praying for this for a year <laughs> don't lie about it but you can tell the truth and be gracious and give them a blessing somebody gives you something you didn't want and you say your friendship and your kindness and your thoughtfulness is the greatest gift I could have probably got. And that could be true if that's in your heart. You know, sometimes a poor sermon, <laughs> a poor sermon can be met with graciousness and it can be good for the preacher who just laid an egg and it can be good for you because you're encouraging the one who laid the egg Oh, maybe it wasn't the greatest sermon, but <laughs> come on. It lets us know that people are human. And again, you don't have to say, man, that's the greatest sermon I've ever heard. Charles Spurgeon ought to go out of business. <laughs> but you can say, I can tell, preacher, you put your heart into that. And because your heart was touched, my heart is touched graciousness well there's could you think of some areas that's just I just named two places where grace can be a gift what are we talking about a gift that can be passed along freely you don't know how much people need grace critics we've got them by the tons sarcasm man you can get that wholesale Smart alecky remarks are plenty. But grace, that's a premium. Pass it along, friend. It's a free gift. Number two, peace. Look at the next word. He says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace. Let me, let me read you a couple of scriptures. Listen to this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. The the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes. What does that, what does, what is a, what does blessed mean? Blessed means a state of happiness. And he says, Jesus said, blessed are you in these Beatitudes when you do these things. He said in chapter 5 of Matthew, verse 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peacemakers. Do you know what? Every family, it's imperative that every family have some peacemakers in it. There's got to be one. Hey, if there's not one peacemaker, friend, your family's in big trouble. There's got to be a peacemaker. And you know what's better than one peacemaker? That's if you've got two. If you've got a husband that's a peacemaker and a wife that's a peacemaker, I think you're going to be okay. Now, if you've got some kids... Guess what? It's still yet even better than mom and dad being peacemakers. 
What if kids are peacemakers? I tell you, we live in a time, now listen, I, I'm talking serious to you. We live in a time where kids are generally unhappy, mean-spirited. Now, I'm not talking about your kids. I'm talking about kids in general in our society. Yours, yours may be fine, but they won't be if we don't teach them. And, and as far as the product that the world is turning out, kids are more smart alecky and combative. I mean, it doesn't matter what mom and dad say. They're saying they're just arguing and fussing and, and trying to go against the grain. It doesn't matter. What, whatever the family's trying to do, there's some kids that's trying to go against it. And it's just a constant pressure. You know what makes a sweet family? Peacemakers. I'm not talking about a dad who says, well, okay, we won't have any standards in our family, we won't have any biblical convictions, we'll just be a bunch of heathen. No, I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking about peacemakers who don't argue and fuss. I, I, there's, a group of, uh, there's a group of Christian debaters that I watch on the Internet. <laughs> it's more fun than going to the movies, man. <laughs> There, there's a group of Christian debaters who's from another denomination who says they're not a denomination. <laughs> I've, I've talked about them recently so I'm not going to call them by name tonight because I've known them all the time but they are so cantankerous they don't even get along with each other I mean if they can't find a Baptist to debate with they'll just debate with each other I mean they're at each other's throat they, they invent things to argue about really it's amusing I mean if if it wasn't so sad, it would be amusing. But, but really, some people are just at war with everything. Some people pride themselves in taking the opposite position. And when you get that in a family or in a church or on the job, friend, you've got a mess. Families need peacemakers. Churches need peacemakers. People who are willing to go and say, Okay, Brother Al, I know you're mad at Brother Denny. And he is a sorry rascal, but let's get over it, okay? <laughs> I'm just joking. Brother Denny's the nicest guy in the world. That's why I picked on him. I knew nobody would believe it if I said it about him. Seriously, if you've got, if you've got people in a church, and conflict can arise, and sometimes disagreements come up, and isn't it great when you've got somebody that will kind of come between them and put an arm around both of them and say, now guys, you, know, you guys know you love each other. And you put an arm on both your shoulders and say, hey, let's, let's settle this like Christians. And, and you got a peacemaker there. You need it in the family, you need it in the church, you need it on the job. Uh, boy, a job can be a horrible place to be during the daytime if you've got a bunch of people that are just crabby. You know, we live in a time when everybody, it seems like almost everybody on the job wants to be at odds with the boss. It seems like if, you're not, if you don't hate the boss, you're not accepted in the employee club, you know. <laughs> You got to hate the boss. You got to hate the company. You got to bad mouth them. Well, it ought not to be that way. We ought to love our job. I mean, if it's that bad, just go get another one. Amen. <laughs> um, oh, let me let me give you one other verse. I said I'd give you a couple of verses with that one. Peace is a free gift we can pass along freely, and I read Matthew five nine. But listen to this. This is one we read oftentimes when we're talking about giving offerings to, uh, to the church but this applies to grace and about anything else you want to apply it to listen to this Luke 6 38 we're talking about giving right we're talking about giving gifts that didn't cost you anything everybody with me you awake didn't check out on me did you okay here it is Luke 6 38 give and it shall be given unto you did you hear that if I give probably going to be given back to me. Isn't that what it says? Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet, with all, it shall be measured to you again. So here's what happens. If I, if I, if I go about spreading grace, and I go about sped, spreading peace, it's more than likely going to come back to me. Isn't that what it teaches in, in Galatians chapter number uh, 6 where it says, For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So if we go about sowing peace, hey, listen, be a peacemaker wherever you go. 
Just be a peacemaker. Not a compromiser, but a peacemaker. Number three, remembrance is a free gift that we can pass along. Look in verse number two, remembrance. Verse two says, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Now look at verse three. What's the first word? Remembering. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, he's talking about remembering in a thankful way. He's talking about remembering people. You know what? There's a lot of forgotten people. You go over to the nursing home and I double dog dare you to go to the nursing home and try to go through it and meet a few people that have all the company they want. See if they've got a bunch of people hanging around visiting with them. You know what we do with, with older folks a lot of times? We push them off in a nursing home and forget about them. Act like they don't exist. Act like they don't have good sense. Just because they move a little slower, they may speak a little slower, it doesn't mean that they don't have hearts that can break. It doesn't mean that they don't have longings and a desire to know and love and be loved. Hey, if you want to be a blessing, just go by a nursing home. Just go by the nursing home and, and meet a few folks. Go to the hospital and find somebody that's been told that they've got cancer. And then remember them. Remember. There's, notice that he, that he mentions remembrance there and thankfulness together. Verse 2 says, we give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. So there's a thankfulness. Remember people in a thankful way. Hebrews 13, 7 points out your leaders. It says in Hebrews 13, 7, remember, did you hear that word? Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. We're supposed to remember those. You know what? Brother Snethern was my pastor when I got saved and was my pastor that I worked for after I went to Bible college. And Brother Snethern and I don't think alike. We don't do things alike. We've got some different ministry ideas, and that's okay. And I still love him, and I still remember what he's done for me. And if, if there's anybody that I want to show appreciation to, it's my pastor that I was saved under. Hey, we don't have to think alike about everything. And I'm not saying we're way off on stuff. I'm just saying that we're two human beings. And we go about things a little different. And I love him. And, uh, you know, there's just one of him. And I'm always going to remember that he took me under his wing and he taught me what I needed to know from the Bible and taught me how to, uh, to evangelize and to, uh, how to teach and to preach. And I love him. I remember the first time... Uh, I hadn't been saved very long and then a Sunday school he asked me to be a Sunday school teacher no he asked me to be Sunday school superintendent and uh, I, he said would you do it I said well I would if I knew what a Sunday school superintendent was supposed to do <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> I didn't have a clue he said oh you can do it I said uh, well, what do I do he said well we have a teachers meeting uh, on such and such night and he said, uh, you just lead the meeting. I said, well, what do I tell them? <laughs> I said, those people have been saved forever. I've been saved a few months. He said, well, you just get up there and read some Bible verses and holler at them. <laughs> so I got up there and read a few verses and hollered at them, and I've been doing it now for 35 years. <laughs> Thankfulness in remembering and prayer in remembering. In Hebrews 13, 3, it says, Remember them that are in bonds as bound with them which suffer adversity as being yourselves also in the body. So remember people. We ought to remember each other. You know what? We ought to remember one another in prayer. If we pray for each other, we'll remember each other, won't we? Remember. You never know what somebody might be going through. And as you remember people, God puts them on your heart to pray for certain things. Now, let me give you number four. 
Talking about gifts that we can pass along that don't cost us anything. The gospel witness is a free gift we can pass along. Look at verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men you, we were among you for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction. Now look at verse uh, number 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place where your faith to God were just spread abroad. Hey, sound like these people were soul winners. Sound like these people got busy. Sound like these people were telling folks how to be saved. Sound like they were trying to be an example. They were living out their faith. Their life was a gospel witness. And with their voice, they told people about the Lord Jesus. So what's a gift we can pass along? Man, it's the gift of the gospel. If there's anything, listen, if there's anything in this world that's valuable to this old world, it's the gospel. If there's anything, if there's anything that people need to hear, it's not Duck Dynasty. It's not Oprah Winfrey. It's not Dr. Phil. If there's anything in this world that people need to hear, it's how Jesus loved us and bled and died for our sins and how he'll save anybody that'll ask him. That's the message people need. Boy, isn't that valuable? We've got the gospel we can pass along. Hallelujah, what a gift. Well, then number five. Don't worry, we're, we're just 12 minutes till 7 and I'm almost done. I told you I can do it. Some of you laughed at me this morning. I, I took it very much to heart and very hurt me very deeply. So I'm, I'm hurting, but I'll get over it. Number five. Leadership is a gift we can pass along. Leadership. Look at verse number 6 again. And you became followers of us. Hey, what's Paul saying? He said, we led and you followed. Leadership. Listen, there's something that you can do for the Lord. This is the birthday of Christ, isn't it? I mean, that's what we say. We don't know when he was born. I think December 25th is as good a time as any. I don't know that it wasn't. So if we're going to celebrate Christmas and we say it's Christ's birthday and we're going, to, we're going to do things for people, it's good to give gifts to each other, isn't it? But it, you know one of the charges that's leveled against Christians oftentimes at Christmas is that we give gifts to each other and we give Christ nothing. That's a charge. They lay at our feet. And so you folks are not celebrating the birthday of Christ. You're busy giving each other gifts. Well, what can we give Christ? What can we give him? We can give him our service. We can be leaders. We can be leaders in our home. We can be leaders in the church. We can be leaders on the job. We can give our life to Christ as an example to the others around us. Leaders. And then number six. This is my last one. Watching is a free gift we can pass along. Watching. Look at verse number 10. And to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even Jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come now while we're giving gifts <laughs> while we're giving gifts why not give Christ the gift that he really did ask us for you say when did he ask us for that well let me read just a couple of verses to you Matthew 24 42 Matthew 24, 42. Jesus said to his disciples, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Like the little, little girl that had been uh, harping to her parents. She was wanting, a, she was wanting, a, she was wanting a, a new watch, a wrist watch for Christmas. And she kept talking about how she wanted this wrist, wrist watch. Finally, her daddy said, said now, Honey, if, if you mention it one more time, about this gift you're wanting, you're definitely not going to get it. I don't want to hear you mention it again. Don't ask for it again. And so they're sitting at the table having devotions, and they're going around the table asking all the kids, what's, what's, a, what's a favorite verse that comes to your mind? And the little girl said, Watch, therefore! <laughs> you know what Jesus wants us to do? He wants us to watch. He says, watch, Matthew 24, 43, the very next verse. He says, for, he, know this, 
that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and not would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Matthew 25, 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. Now in Matthew 26, 38, an example of what happens when people don't watch for the Lord. We, we don't have our attention upon Him. Are you listening to me? When we don't have our attention upon the Lord watching for His return, watch what happens. In Matthew, in Matthew 26, verse 38, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's getting ready to go to the cross. And he leaves his disciples, his inner circle there, and tells them to watch and pray, and he's going to go over yonder and pray a little while. He's getting ready to go to the cross. And he says, guys, pray for me. Watch and pray. Now look what he says, verse 20, uh, 38, Matthew 26, 38. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he cometh unto the disciples, verse number 40, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? And verse 41, he says, Watch and pray that ye enter not into what? Temptation. <laughs> the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. If we're watching, listen to me, I'm finishing right here. If we watch for him, if we give the gift to Jesus of watching for him, our mind is focused upon him. We go to bed thinking he might come tonight. This could be the time when the trumpet sounds, the clouds are rolled back, and he shows up in the sky and calls all of his children home. This could be the night. Tomorrow could be the morning. Tomorrow night could be the night. But sooner or later he's coming and we're to watch for him. And he says if we watch, it's less likely that we'll enter into temptation. Why? Because we've got him on our mind. And the more you love him, the less likely you are to be to give in to that sin, that temptation that comes your way. Watch and pray. These are gifts that we can give without cost to us. Jesus has already paid the price. Could you give some of those gifts to him? I believe we could, couldn't we? Let's plan on giving him the gift. Maybe, maybe the gift is that of grace. Maybe you need to just do a tune-up on, on your mouth and say, you know, instead of being sarcastic, I'm going to be gracious in the coming year. Instead of, instead of causing trouble, I'm going to try to help prevent trouble. I'm going to offer peace. I'm going to, I'm going to give out the gospel. I'm going to get a handful of, uh, of tracts and stick them in my pocket and hand them out as I go along the way and see if there's somebody I can talk to about the Lord and see if I can get them saved. Evangelism. And, uh, and maybe you could give Jesus that gift of watching and just watch for him. Make it, a, make it a, a priority this year. Start watching because I believe he's going to show up pretty soon. I believe he's coming. Let's pray together. Father, we do pray that you'd bless us tonight. Thank you for the time we've had together. And Lord, we pray that you'd just bless our hearts as we think about gifts to give, especially these that are such valuable gifts and we can give them freely. We can be broke, dead broke, and give these gifts. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to do it. We love you. And Lord, we recognize your birthday at Christmas. Lord, help us to sing with the angels and praise your name during this Christmas and think about you and watch for you more than we watch for the gifts for ourselves. Help us to be givers. Bless the invitation, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you please stand as she plays?